Sir Patrick Spence. The king sits in Dumfarm Lion Town, drinking the blood red wine. Oh, where shall I get a scaly skipper to sail this ship or mine? Then up and spake an elden knight, sat at the king's right knee. Sir Patrick Spence is the best sailor that ever sailed the sea. The king has written a broad letter and sealed it with his hand and sent it to Sir Patrick Spence who is walking on the strand. To Norway, to Norway, to Norway over the farm, the king's daughter of Norway, just though much, fetch her home. The first line that Sir Patrick read, a loud laugh, laughed he. The next line that Sir Patrick read, the tear blinded his eye. Oh, who is this has done this deed, has told the king of me to send us out at this time of the year to sail upon the sea? Be it wind, be it wet, be it hail, be it slet, our ship must sail the farm, the king's daughter of Norway, tis we must fetch her home. They hoisted their sails on Monday morn with all the speed they may, and they have landed in Norway upon a Wednesday. They had not been a week, a week in Norway, but today, when that sir, uh, lords of Norway, began aloud to say, A hey, Scottishmen spent all our king's gold and all our queen's fee. A hey, lie, a hey, lie, a hey, liars loud. So loud I hear a lie, for I brought as much of the white mon as gain my men and me, and a half foe of the good red goud out over the sea with me. Make ready, make ready, my merry men all, our good ship sails a mon. Now ever alack, my master dear, I fear a deadly storm. I saw the new moon late yestern with the old moon in her arm, and if we go to sea, master, I fear we'll come to harm. They had not sailed a league, a league, a league but barely three, when the lift grew dark and the wind blew loud and girly grew the sea. The anglers break and the top masts lap. It was such a deadly storm, and the waves came over the broken ship till all her sides were torn. Oh, where will I get a good sailor, will take my helm in hand, till I get up to the tail top mast to see if I can spy land. Oh, here am I a good sailor. Oh, here am I a sailor good, will take the helm in hand, till you go up to the tall top mast, but I fear you will never spy land. He had not gone a step, a step, a step but barely in, when a bolt flew out of the good ship's side and the salt sea came in. Go fetch a web of the silken cloth, another of the twine, and wrap them into our good ship's side and let not the sea come in. They fetched a web of the silken cloth, another of the twine, and they wrapped them into the good ship's side. But still the sea came in. O oh, loath, both were our good Scots lords to wet their cork heeled shoon, but along ere all the play was played, they wet their hats a boon. And many was the feather bed that fluttered on the farm, and many was a good lord's son that never more came home. The ladies rang their fingers white, the maidens tore their hair, all for the sake of their true loves, for them they'll see no mare. O oh, lang, lang may the maidens sit with their gold combs in their hair, all waiting for their own dear loves, for them they'll see no mare. Or forty miles of Aberdeen, tis fifty fathoms deep, and there lies good Sir 
Patrick Spence, the Scots Lords at his feet. Sir Patrick Spence is a traditional Scottish ballad, one of the most famous in English and Scottish literature. It tells a story of a Scottish king who sends Sir Patrick Spence, an exceptional sailor, on a dangerous sea voyage that ultimately leads to tragedy. Sir Patrick Spence is a traditional ballad typically written in quatrains, four line stanzas, with a simple rhyme scheme, often ABAB. The lines alternate between iambic tetrameter, four beats, and iambic trimeter, three beats, giving the ballad a rhythmic and musical quality. The use of repetition and incremental development, a gradual revelation of events, adds to the suspense and tragic build-up. The ballad, Sir Patrick Spence, tells a tragic story of loyalty, duty and the devastating power of nature centered around the character of Sir Patrick Spence, an experienced Scottish sailor. The ballad begins with the King of Scotland sitting in Dumfline, drinking wine and wondering who can captain his new ship. An elderly knight seated next to the king suggests Sir Patrick Spence, known for his skill as the best sailor in the land. The king writes a letter with royal orders for Sir Patrick to sail to Norway to bring back the king's daughter, likely after a royal marriage. The letter is sent to Sir Patrick, who is walking by the shore when he receives it. At first, Sir Patrick laughs at the contents of the letter, perhaps in disbelief or irony. But as he continues to read, his laughter turns to sorrow. He foresees the dangers ahead and realizes the perilous nature of the voyage he is being asked to undertake. One of his crew members speaks up, referencing a maritime superstition. Seeing the new moon in the old moon's arms is considered an ill omen for sailors. This adds to the sense of dread about the journey. Despite the warning, the crew set sail. However, they barely travel three leagues, a short distance, before disaster strikes. The sky darkens, the wind picks up, and the sea becomes rough and wild. The storm grows in intensity, with the ship's anchors breaking and the topmast snapping. The storm overwhelms the ship and waves crash over it, tearing apart the vessel's sides. The situation worsens as the nobles on board, who were initially concerned about getting their shoes wet, soon find themselves drenched, helpless in the face of the violent storm. As the storm rages on, the focus shifts to the noblemen's wives back home. They sit with fans in their hands and gold combs in their hair, waiting in vain for their husbands to return. This emphasizes the hopelessness of the situation. No one will return from this doomed voyage. The storm ultimately proves fatal. Sir Patrick Spence and his crew go down with the ship, sinking into the sea near Aberdour, where they are buried 50 fathoms deep. Sir Patrick is described as lying at the bottom of the sea with the Scottish lords at his feet, highlighting the tragic nobility of their deaths. The ballad concludes by reinforcing the image of Sir Patrick and his men lying beneath the sea, their final resting place, with no one left to tell their tale. The storm eventually calms, but by then it's too late, everyone on board has perished. The story is one of the duty bound by royal command, the inability to escape fate and the overwhelming power of nature. It is a timeless reminder of the tragic consequences that can arise when human courage and skill come up against the forces of nature, which are often indifferent to status or power. Thank you.